there is a video explaining the rules of these speed runs. If you don't care, here you go. This is what we're gonna see once we open up Harmony 21. This is where you name what the file type is. This is the resolution for said file type. I usually have it at 4K, but it doesn't really matter. It's vector, it'll export as it is. So we're gonna have it at 1080p, 24 frame rate, and I already have a set file, so I'm gonna go to this. So it's gonna open, and here is our workspace. To scroll and use the wheel, and to pan, you hold spacebar and click. So you don't have to do this. I did this because I was an idiot, and I was like, oh, I'm a hand-drawn animator, so I guess I gotta use the hand-drawn workspace. So it switches to this type of up workspace right over here so we're gonna adjust this to make it not look so shitty. first things first we need to delete x sheet because we are not paper animators we don't need that we're gonna go down here to the color tab we're gonna click tool properties and we're gonna move it till you see this little blue boss square bam now we have that go back to our colors over here we're gonna make this a little bit thinner like that I'm gonna scroll this to the left and then we're finally we're gonna go to our windows toolbars and add pen settings this is our stabilizer for tune boom so we're gonna we're gonna click this little bar right here and we're gonna move this over here as soon as it decides to thank you all right awesome that is our workspace adjustments for hotkeys i'm just gonna put them on the thing because i just know this program too well so there you go hotkeys editing boom all right, let's get into camera mode versus drawing mode. So drawing mode, I guess how many people thought people were gonna use this to draw. This is a completely useless feature in my eyes. Just go to camera mode, that's all that matters. Brush tool, our brush tool is over here, this little brush, you can press Alt B to switch to it, or you can press Alt forward slash to switch to the pencil. So the big difference is pencil can be controlled through control point. If so you click this little white arrow and you can control the little vertices with the vector. I don't really care about that. I just control Z and remake a line. The pencil tool did make Toon Boom lag if you put too many strokes. I don't know if it still does it, but that's why I don't use the pencil anymore. Um, all our our brushes are to the right fairly self-explanatory minimum size to the right you can also create your own brushes but i'm not going to get into that and the stabilizer is up here that's basically it for the brush tool stabilization this is a fairly straightforward item there are two types of stabilization average which is where it just slows down the nib slightly as you clean up and then there's pulled string which is what blender uses as you can see that little line almost like i'm pulling the string very simple those are the types of stabilization let's get into the timeline so this little eye emoji is the layer visibility. The singular layer is if we have another layer. Yes, always add close and then it's just so I can focus on this single layer over here. So if I have this over here, it's gonna focus on this layer. That's basically it. After that, we have the little pancake icon, which is just onion skin. This is to lock the layer. This is just for organizing aspects. So you can like toggle outline mode. And then let's see, this little man right here is for thumbnail mode and adjusting the opacity of our layer. That's basically it for the timeline. So let's get into adjusting onion skin and animating. Alt O is to turn on onion skin. And if you wanna extend those exposures, you click these little green arrows like so, drag them in, drag them out. And then if you want to make the timeline smaller or bigger, you hold control and then you just use the scroll wheel. Uh, let's start animating. To so scroll through the timeline with the keys, it's just the carrot keys or common period like every other program. So we're gonna delete this. Also, unlike the other programs, you don't have to create keys and frames. It just does it automatically. That's why I love this. So there is no insert frames. It just, you just draw and it makes one automatically. All right, cool. There's your animation. Let's get into a quick quirk with the timeline. So let's just say I'm going to label this with an X. All right, well, let's just say I like this frame a lot. I'm going to copy and paste, right? I'm going to hit Control C, Control, Control C, and then I'm going to Control V it on my timeline. So Control C, Control V, right? I'm going to change a little bit. Ready? Look at that. I want to go back to the previous frame. Wait, it changed that one too. That's because Toon Boom is a digital animation program. So it is economical and that it reuses the frames. If you want to Xerox the frame, you actually have to hold control to make with the quick select tool, copy the strokes, and then put that onto a new frame. So if I delete this X over here, it's going to be in the previous frame still, because these are completely different frames. This is a quirk. I don't know how to change this. I'm just used to it now. All right, let's get into playback and our playback bar. So our playback bar is up top next to our workspace selection. So this is to play back anything we have in the timeline. This is quick render and play. This is replay. You hold that, you click that in, and if it's on, it's gonna loop this. So after that, we have our sound. So if we have any sound and we play, it's gonna play the sound in the playback. And this little speaker with an S is for audio scrubbing. Over here, we have like a quick little reverse control item so you can reverse these and control at certain frame rates if you really want to get specific with what's fucking up in your animation. And there's also this little scroller if you just want to do it slowly as well. So that way it doesn't keep replaying. Uh, next we have our frame count. And over here, this is just selects which frame we're at. We can always move up like this. This is our start frame. This is for looping. So let's say I want to loop this section. You can just move that there. S stop right there. 
and then we can stop right there. It's fairly simple. You just set your little red bar over there. So I'm gonna hit start over here. And over here, this red bar actually is our scene length. If you wanna increase the scene length, you can drag this or you can go to scene, scene length, and then just type the number of the scenes you want. So obviously I don't need it this long, so I'm gonna make it about this long, all right? And this is our frame rate over here. So adjusting exposures, this is a fairly simple process. So I'm gonna use the carrot key or the period and comma keys like I have been, and I'm just gonna push plus and minus because those are, those are just exposures. I'm gonna do one. All right, and then we're gonna go over here to stop this loop over here, and we're gonna play and see how this looks. Awesome. All right, let's get into where things get a little quirky as well. We're gonna go into quick render, right? I just wanna see what it's gonna look like once it's finished. So I'm gonna hit that little play button. It's gonna give me this little prompt over here. I'm gonna hit yes. All right, why is it all black? Oh no, that's because like I was saying, this is a digital version of animating and cells are clear. So what do we have to do on? We have to turn on the light. So we're gonna to go to our drawing layer, insert color card. So now we have the light on. Now we're gonna click quick render and let's see. There we go. That's how our animation is gonna look like if we render it composited and such. So that's how you do that. All right, let's get into the fill tool. This is what things get very kind of crazy, but very useful. So you can either hit Alt I or just click the paint bucket. And um, actually, let's make a new color. We're gonna click this little plus right here. Just make it like so, all right, and this new color. So you can either do this manually or this section right here is actually to color a bunch of frames at once. So this allows you to cut, color all frames horizontally on the timeline, and this lets you color all frames going vertically down the timeline. So I'm gonna do a big circle like this, but oh no, it changes the colors of the line as well. So what can I do to stop that? This is where we get into the line layer versus the color layer. Disclaimer, line layer and color layer are exclusive to the advanced and professional versions of Harmony. If you don't have that, you just actually have to duplicate your lines into a separate layer. But other than that, the same rules apply. You just don't have a color layer. The same tool options apply for the select tool. And this is just to select a separate layer. So watch this. I'm gonna select all my frames. And I'm gonna hit the star on my numpad. Now I'm gonna go to this little C and see these little blue lines. This is the color layer. So now I can just color everything like I did before like that. So, and you have to make sure all your shapes are closed or else it won't color. So watch this. What's really cool about this, let's say I wanna clean up this line. It's not gonna erase the color, it's just there. So it's really useful for cleaning up and coloring everything at once, all right? Final, final thing you need to know, universal color change. Let's say I don't wanna like these colors and I don't wanna go and just like keep circling them. I can just actually change the color right here, like so. Very useful, very cool. That's why I love this program. All right, quick thing for the select tool. So. Like I was saying, it has the same aspects as the paint bucket tool with this. This is to select both the line and color layer. So if you want to move those things as well, and you can have multiple selected at once. Let's say you want to just move all the frames and resize them at once. You can go click this little, click the select tool again, reposition all drawings. There you go. Very simple. That's basically a select tool. Let's get into importing images and videos. So for importing images, it's fairly straightforward. You have to go to file, import images. I'm going to import this picture of Adam Sandler's face. Make sure it's import as a Toon Boom bitmap drawing because that'll allow you to edit it. So we'll hit OK. Cool. So importing video is the same idea, but it's going to look like Toon Boom has crashed because it's going to take for fucking ever. So just be patient. Make sure it's set to uh, Toon Boom bitmap. Make sure it's 24 frames and make sure it is an MP4. Just be patient. That's basically it for importing videos and images. Let's get into importing audio. So we're going to go to file, import, sound. We're gonna click test for flash. That's literally it. And if you wanna turn audio scrubbing, you click this little thing right here and audio scrubbing is on right now. Fairly simple. All right, let's get into exporting. There are two types of exporting. First off, if you wanna just export a composited thing, let's turn on our color color, export movie. So we're gonna set it to H264. So this is gonna export a composited animation that can't be edited without extra work. So this is just if you wanna see something you don't care about anything else going on. All right, now let's say you want to export a PNG sequence for compositing. Compositing is just a fancy word for fixing it in post. It's a transparent animation. You're going to turn off your color card. You're going to go to File, Export, Movie. We're going to change this to a quick time. We're going to go to Movie Options, Settings, and set this to PNG and just export all the frames. OK, OK, and then I'll just name this, yeah, that, OK. So we'll export that, okay. And now we just gotta watch our animation. So let's see.
As I said in the rules, I am not even scratching the surface of these softwares. I'm just trying to help you animate a ball. You know, you have any corrections, leave it in the comments. Help people out. Be nice. I hope this helped. And if you want to see other runs or even more of my videos, just click any of these playlists or click my channel. Thank you so much.